Good afternoon everyone, I hope you're doing well. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is a first introductory step into yield farming. So if you've traded meme coins and you've been unsuccessful, or you just don't have the time to watch charts all day, I would recommend you actually learn yield farming. Now I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know in this short video. We've also got five other videos we're gonna do on a simple little crash course for you. So how it works is when you swap a token, you pay a fee to people providing liquidity. So for example, if we were to swap one Solana into USDC, we would pay a fee, a base fee of six cents. And totally we're adding up to about eight cents on the swap. So we're not getting the exact amount and that changes depending on what liquidity pool we're going through, etc. So these, these are the pools that we're actually routing through. Now, if you take a look at Orca's docs, 87% of the fees goes to people providing liquidity, 12% goes to the actual protocol and 1% to climate fund. Now, if we were to lock in this swap and there's hundreds of swaps happening per day, now we can take a look at the actual pool here and we can see every few seconds, there's a buy and a sell from elsewhere. And each one of these will be providing a fee to the liquidity provider which will be us hopefully. So how we'd make our first liquidity pool is we'd go to slow USDC on a 0.04%. Now I want you to do this as well and I want you to do this with $10. Now we've got two options. We can do a full range position, which means our liquidity gets spread out between every single price point. There is no range and there is no impermanent loss. So we would just lose value in our portfolio. So let's say for example, we want to make a pool here, $10 equally spread. And as the price drops, so will the value of our Solana and our USDC. Also, when the price goes up, the value will go up equally shared between them. These two will keep the price. If it goes up 10%, each one will go up 10%. This is the safest way and the big best beginner friendly way to actually get into yield farming. Now, the downside is, our estimated yield is very low. However, this is something you can hold very long term and you can put a large amount of money. If you were to put, I don't know, $20,000, you would earn $5 a day. Now that might seem like a bit too much to risk, but your yield is still there. You are still earning the yield. But for now, we're gonna lock in $10. Now, once this goes in, it will remove from our wallet and it will go into our portfolio over here. Now, as transactions go in, we will see our yield go in. Now we're gonna make another position and then we're gonna check back with the results so you can see a comparison of the balance change and the pending yield as we move forward. Now we are gonna do something called a V2, sorry, a V3 concentrated liquidity. Now this means we aren't spreading our liquidity out between all different levels. So we're gonna concentrate in a very tight spread here. So this is a range of 10% price movement each way. So this is our starting price, 10% up, 10% down. Now, if we add in our little $10 here, which it might be slightly different, $9, $10, it's roughly the same. You can adjust this if you are fixated on the price so to speak I know some people would be but you can just drag this up here till it's about even now what's going to happen is if the price goes up in value let's say the price appreciates all of our Solana which is our ten dollars here will get swapped into USDC and it will stop earning yield once it goes out. Now we will not gain from the price of Solana going up. That's the only downside to this. Also, if the price falls, we will swap all our dollars. It will essentially buy Solana as it falls and it will fall into Solana. Once it drops down, we will start to, we have $20 or just slightly less of Solana. And as it falls, the value of our Solana falls and we won't earn any yield. So you will get the divergence loss is when it goes up and you didn't get the capital gains or the earnings if you just held Solana and impermanent loss is where it falls. 
I won't go into too much detail, but a 10% range is pretty safe in the grand scheme of things. It's not going to dip overnight. We're going into the weekend. But for now, for demonstration purposes, you can see the difference in the yield. So this is why most people will start with a concentrated pool. And even if you shrink it even more, you can get 1% yield a day. Now you do optimize your risk. Your risk is much higher if you do that. But for now, we're going to do a 10% range, like I said, with about $20. So that's just for argument's sake. We're going to just add up roughly $10, $20. Now we're going to add this to the liquidity pool. And like before, it's going to go into our portfolio. Now you can see here, our estimated yield is 11 cents for 24 hours. And our averaged out yield is 0 0.27 per day. And we've already started to accumulate some very small amount of Solana in yield. When someone sells, we will earn Solana. And when someone buys, we will earn dollars. Now we have roughly $40. We're going to check back in a day or two and see how this portfolio done. So here are the results a few days later. We can currently see we put $20 or above $20 into both of these. And we are currently down on both of them. However, take note, our full range position is higher in balance because the USDC and the Solana stays about equal in terms of when the value drops, it drops the USDC as well. However, we have a higher value than we have ever so slightly than our ranged position. Now, we have way less, you can see, over 20 times more yield on a concentrated position. This is why most people never touch full range positions unless you get a really good entry. So if you bought the bottom of something, then you can probably do a full range position and you'll get the capital gains on it way more than you would the yield and it'll go out of range, etc. So what we can learn from this is we are still in range, even though we've dropped down, we are in profit ever so slightly. We're in profit and I could take this yield now. I could harvest it. So I usually harvest and compound half of it back. So we can take, for example, about 12 cents each way we have. So I'm going to em empty back in about six cents worth, or let's say five cents compound back. And what compounding back does, and obviously I'll take a slight bit of profit. It's always important. People tell me, oh, when should I take profits? The most important time to take profits is every single day. So that slight profit, I took half of it, half of the yield. I'll do whatever I want with it. If you do that every day, you will not have to wait for a position to sell. So we've compounded back in and we're eventually going to keep compounding it back. And if it ticks up, Solana does, then we'll be in a nicer position. Our balance will be much higher on the top end. Now, bear in mind, if Solana suddenly shoots up over the next few days, we will swap all of it to USDC. But we do have our full range position, which will keep going up in value. So I'll do the second part of this. There's probably going to be five or six parts to it, maybe more, maybe less. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned a very basic introductory uh, lesson to yield farming.